Hello, my name is Nick Huntington Klein. Uh, this is the first in a series of videos uh, on econometrics. And so the first one is just going to be what is econometrics? What are we doing here? What's the whole point? Uh, so econometrics is the way that econo the economists work with data and we try to learn things from data. Now, there's a lot of people who try to learn things from data, uh, there's statisticians, there's data scientists, uh, but the goals that these different groups have uh, are slightly different. And so the way that we work with data is a little bit different. So take a data scientist, for example. A data scientist is largely interested in making good predictions, right? So they want to say, okay, well, we have all this information about a customer. What's the probability that they're going to purchase something, right? That might be a good uh, data science task. Or I have this picture. I can see all the pixels in the picture. Based on the pixels in the picture, can I predict uh, whether it's a picture of a cat or a picture of a dog? Another good data science task. Uh, what economists are mostly interested in is not so much prediction, right? People tend to think that economists are all about like predicting what the future of the economy is gonna be. And there are a few economists who do that, but really most of the time that's not what we're doing. What we are interested in doing is getting very accurate estimates of the relationship between different variables. So we're not so much interested in, let's say, trying to predict what GDP is gonna be next month, although again, there are people who try to do that. Uh, we're more interested in, let's say, how does our tax structure affect our GDP growth? Right? We want to know the relationship between tax structure and GDP growth, uh, and we want to get a very accurate idea of what that relationship is, and not just the relationship that we've seen in the past, but what is the underlying true relationship between those two things. Right? In a counterfactual world uh, where, let's say, we could change the tax system to be something a little bit different, how would GDP growth be different? Right? That's something that's very difficult to answer when you're just looking at raw data because the raw data that you have all came from the world that actually exists. Uh, and so if you're trying to get something from the world that does not quite exist yet, things get a little bit thornier. So there's actually a pretty easy solution to this problem where we're trying to get a very clean uh, estimate of the relationship between two variables, and that is running a randomized experiment. Right? If you could randomly assign uh, the tax structure, you could very easily figure out how tax structure affects GDP because you just see, okay, when I assign the tax structure to be like this, this is what happened to GDP. When I assign the tax structure to be like that, that's what happened to GDP. But we can't do that. Uh, a lot of the questions that economists are interested in, you can't run an experiment, either because it would be impossible. You can't actually get governments to agree to just randomly assign their tax structure like an economist wants them to, uh, or because it would be infeasible. Maybe you could run an experiment, but it would be super expensive, or it could just be immoral, like, <laughs> right? You know, you can't randomly assign people to do something that's harmful for them just so you can see uh, what the effect of that thing might be. So we can't run an experiment. And again, there are econometrists who run experiments, but that's not what this is about. Econometrics is about taking data that already exists, observational data uh, that was collected not for the per without the control of the researcher, right? The data was collected outside the control of the researcher. Maybe they were in charge of the data collection process, but they had no say in what actually went on there. They couldn't randomly assign a treatment. Uh, all they could do is look and observe and see what's going on in the world. Then taking that observational data and drawing uh, inferences, making, making claims about the underlying data generating process that went into that data. So what is the true relationship between two variables that we can figure out based only on looking at observational data? That's what econometrics is all about. Now for doing this, economists have to think a lot about what's called the data generating process. Now the data generating process is whatever set of underlying true laws there are that make us see the data that we see. Uh, so for one example, let's say uh, that I have something in my hand, right? Uh, and it's up here and then I drop it and it's down there, right? What are the observations that I have? Well, I observed that I was holding it and it was up here. And then I also observed that I dropped it and it was down there, right? So those are my observations. Uh, what's the data generating process that led me to see those observations? Well, the law of gravity would be part of the data generating process there, right? It is why when I dropped the uh, nail clippers, they dropped down, right? That's, that's the, the, the sort of why of what's going on, right? You can think of a data generating process as why. Why do we see the data that we see? Uh, why do we see the relationships between variables that we see? And we need to think about the data generating process very, very carefully because without the ability to run an experiment, we need to take advantage of what we think we know about the data generating process to learn something new. Uh, so uh, let's take a quick example and, and we can just see the kinds of tasks that we're up against uh, and how difficult they can be. And then of course the rest of this class will be about how we can solve the obvious problems that are gonna pop up here. 
So let's talk about a, an example of a data generating process and one that should be familiar to you if you've taken economics before, which is the model of competitive supply and demand. So as economists, we would say, okay, if we have a competitive market, let's just say we have a competitive market, we observe that the prices and quantities might change from time to time. Sometimes the price is higher, sometimes it's lower, or sometimes more units get sold, sometimes fewer. Why? Why do we see the prices and quantities changing around in a competitive market? Well, an economist would tell you it's probably because of supply and demand shifting around. So that's our theory. That's our data generating process. We would say that the reason we see the prices and quantities that we observe is because of the supply and demand uh, forces working underneath the table, right? That's our data generating process. And we can map this out. So here's a, a standard graph of supply and demand. And you can see our theoretical supply line going sloping up there, our theoretical demand sloping down. And what we get from this is a single observation. We, the only thing that we actually see is that red dot right there. We see that the price is 50, and we see that 50 units were sold. That's what we see. The theoretical supply and demand curves are invisible to us. We are theorizing that they are there. And our goal as econometricians is to try to take those observations, take just the red dots, and figure out what the black lines look like. So we're trying to use our observations, despite the fact that we can't run an experiment, to learn about the data generating process. We use the prices and quantities to learn what supply and demand look like. And that's just one example, right? It's not all supply and demand. The prices that we see, they're coming from this theoretical construct of supply and demand. Given that theoretical construct and the observations that we can see, if we do our econometrics very carefully, we might be able to work back to learn something about the data generating process that we're actually interested in. And this will help us learn more about economics because economics has to do with these theoretical structures that we think are there. Uh, and we want to learn, are those the right theoretical structures? Are they the wrong ones? Can we show that they're the wrong ones? If they're the right ones, what are the specific details? We, if we think the supply and demand are going on, how steep is supply or demand, right? That's something that we could figure out from our observations. Of course, this is difficult, right? It's not always obvious how to take an observation and turn it back into a theoretical claim. Uh, and this is a problem that we're going to come up against again and again. So let's say, for example, these are the observations that we saw. We followed the same market for five weeks in a row, and these are the prices and quantities that we saw. How could we take these observations and turn them back into supply and demand curves? Right? I could say something like, oh yeah, when we move from this point right here to this point right here, that must have been because, oh, demand shifted left. How do I know it's not because supply shifted right? And so each of those claims would, would lead me to a different conclusion about the slope of supply or the slope of demand if I was trying to learn about those two things. Uh, and so being able to figure out which of those two is going on and how we can isolate using statistics just one of those explanations, which is a process called identification that we'll talk about as well, uh, that is the sort of main task of econometrics. So what are econom what's econometrics all about? It's all about trying to precisely estimate the relationship between two variables and not just pre precisely estimate the relationship that we see, but precisely estimate the theoretical relationship that's running under the hood in the data generating process. Uh, when we do this, it means that we are trying to take observations that we actually see and use them to learn about theoretical structures, uh, which can be difficult because as you can see on this graph right here, uh, it's not always obvious how you can take a set of observations and turn those into something that you can know about a theoretical structure. Uh, and this whole class is going to be figuring out how we can do that, when we can do that, and when we can't. Thank you.